Hi Myers friends and family, my name is Angela and I'm here to talk to you today about the Altair and Meridian. Uh, I only have the Altair here with me today. The Meridian is essentially the exact same machine, but it's embroidery only. So anything we talk today about sewing won't apply to the Meridian, but everything else applies to the Meridian. Um, I'm very fond of this machine. I have an Altair myself. Uh, she does tons and tons of things. And so we'll dive into all of those features uh, today. I'll talk about it. Um, one of the big pieces of this is you have a very nice throat space with this, so you can do a lot of quilting with it when you have the Altair. And the hoop size goes all the way up to a 9.5 by 14, so you can do tons of embroidery projects on this machine. Um, this machine also has it where you can send files uh, digitally through uh, Wi-Fi, which is a really, really cool feature that it has, and it has some uh, beginning digitizing features with using the IQ Designer. So there's a lot of cool features that this machine has and we'll get right into it. Okay, so right now we're looking at the Altair. We're gonna talk about sewing a little bit. Um, again, the sewing only applies to the Altair. Meridian is embroidery only, so none of this applies to that. So when you switch your Altair from embroidery to sewing, the first thing you wanna do is turn off your machine. You'll remove the embroidery arm and put on the accessory tray. You'll change your foot to the standard sewing ankle and a foot and you'll change your needle to a sewing needle. So after that, one of the first things you'll need to do is to wind a bobbin. So I'll show you how to wind a bobbin. Now we use a standard class 15 bobbin. We prefer you use the plastic ones. Um, then you don't have as much issues with the, the rotation in the, the bobbin area. Let me just pull this up just so I can still see you. So you can use either one of the spool pins. My preference is I, used to, I like to use the top one for winding a bobbin. Um, one really nice feature of the Meridian and the Altair is that there's actually two separate motors in the machine. So you can wind a bobbin while you're sewing or while you're embroidering. So if you know, um, maybe you're working on some kind of freestanding lace that it takes a lot, of, a lot of bobbin for it, you can be winding bobbins while it's sewing. Okay, so at the top, there's a little diagram up here, what you need to do. So you go across through this little hook here. Um, again, it's very easy to see up here on the top. Um, you go around. Um, this little area right here. One of the things I like to do, especially for embroidery, I, I wind a bobbin a little bit differently. So some people will tell you to, to spin around and whatnot, but when you're embroidering and you get this caught when it's coming off, it can actually pull your project out of the hoop. So I don't like that to happen. So what I like to do is take the thread and go through the hole in the bobbin and have that thread on the bottom when you load it on the, the bobbin pin. Um, with this really slack here, um, it can get caught up underneath once you start winding the bobbin. So my tip to you is to make sure it's very straight from these two areas. So you can gently pull on the back side and make sure they're straight. Uh, if you do ever get thread wound up in there, you can actually lift this up and get it off really easily. Um, actually, we should probably do a video on that just to show you that separately. But once you have this all connected, you push in the little mechanism and you can see on the screen, it'll actually say, okay, it knows it's in bobbin winding mode. Um, and again, while you're embroidering, all this can happen. So it has a dial as to how fast you want to wind it. Um, you typically want to go all the way up to the top and then just back it off one. Um, you don't want to go too fast. You can overstretch your thread and you don't want to do that. So then you just hit start and it starts winding your bobbin. Um, while we're here talking about bobbins, I'll stop for just a second. This I'm winding it with just regular thread for sewing. But when you go to embroider, uh, we definitely recommend that you use finishing touch bobbin thread. Um, there's two different kinds. As you can see, there's one that's got the white and one that's got the teal color. Um, these are very important based on the machine you have. If you have the Altair, it takes a 60 weight bobbin thread. So you'll want anything that has kind of the white or the clear bobbin. Uh, we sell white and black thread in this. And then if you're using the Meridian, you need to use a 90 weight thread. So this teal one is only for the Meridian. Um, so you want to keep track of that, but you have the, the best, best embroidery results when you use those bobbin threads. All right, and you'll notice that when it was done, it automatically stopped on its own. It's not like other machines. It'll sit there and kind of mm, kind of hesitate and keep going. Um, the other thing that's by design is it doesn't fill it all the way up. It goes to about 90%. And the reason for that is if you over wind your bobbin, when you go to put it in the bobbin case, it doesn't spin freely. So again, this is all by design. Um, you just trim it and you're all ready to go with your, your bobbin. Super, super easy. All right, the next important thing that we need to do is to thread the machine. And this is the same process whether or not you're embroidering or whether you're sewing. And so you basically take your spool of thread 
and you use the lower pin and this just pivots up so it's kind of nice to be able to get in there. Um, we recommend you use a spool cap that keeps your thread kind of off to the side, but it's very important to use the right kind of spool cap. So we have this kind of spool cap, which seems like it should work, but sometimes you can get it where the thread gets caught underneath it and you definitely don't want that. Okay, So you want to make sure you're applying the right spool cap to it. So for these embroidery spools like this, we recommend this itty bitty little spool cap. And when that goes in there, it just kind of sets right in there and you can see there's nowhere for the thread to get trapped on this and it'll come off freely. Um, the spool cap like this is more designed for an old school kind of a spool like this. But if you look, this spool cap is just a little too small for this spool of thread. So your machine comes with, I think, three different sizes of these. You definitely want to make sure one is just slightly larger than what you have on here. And again, the idea is just so that the thread can come off freely without getting caught because the little notches that are in here, all it takes is one little bit of thread to catch in that notch and it pulls on your thread and it can break a needle. So we don't want that. All right, so once you have your spool cap on, again, there's a really great diagram to show you how to do this. So we go around the metal, we go around and back, then we go down and up. Um, one important thing to make pay attention to, right now I have the presser foot up. You want to make sure that it's up. If it's down, uh, the tension discs are closed and you can't get the thread in there. And you'll also see that there, well, I'll put it down real quick. You can actually see there's like a little guard here, so it's not going to let you thread around the take-up lever. And being threaded around this take-up lever is very, very important. So if you see that guard there, you need to make sure you bring the presser foot up. And then you're going to go around and back. You want to make sure that it's on that take-up lever. So we're going to go down right here by the needle this is the number six. You need to make sure that thread gets right in there, locked over to there. So now my trick is, so we had the presser foot up when we were going through this, but now that we're down here, I go ahead and put the presser foot down. And so what that does is it clamps on our thread and it makes it a little bit easier to handle. So we're not just pulling and have it a lot of thread. So we want to go through this metal channel right here and up over the number seven. And then we go back behind and you can cut the thread off. And again, one of my favorite features is the button that threads it for you. Ta-da! As easy as that. All right, the next step is to put the bobbin in. So this is the bobbin that we just wound. Um, and if you look, you can hold it to where the thread comes off the right side or off the left side. And if you look at, if you forget this, we all do, uh, there's a little diagram down here by our bobbin case. So um, you'll see it comes off the left side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay this in, in there. And then with this tail, there's a little finger in here. We're gonna go around that finger and around the side. And at this point, you wanna actually pull on the thread so where you can see the bobbin spinning and then you can cut it off. And then you can pop the, the cover back on. Um, I didn't show you how we took the cover off, but there's just a little square here that you just put your finger in and it pops open and out. So, And then when you put it back in, make sure that little tab gets in on the left side and it all clicks down in there and everything's secure. All right, so now that we got everything threaded, it's ready to go. We have our main screen um, and we just click on sewing. If for some reason you were in the embroidery screen, or in the IQ designer, all you have to do to get back to the screen is in the top right hand corner, you hit the home button. But so now we're gonna just pick sewing. And these are all the features you have with sewing. Uh, we won't go into all of this, but there's tons of things that we have going on. So on the main page, you have all of your utility stitches. If you can see, we kind of have some sub tabs over here to see many, many more stitches. And you're like, oh wow, look at all those stitches. Um, these are still pretty, just all standard stitches. Um, I'll point out a couple of things. So the 1-03 and 1-04 are center stitches. Uh, so the difference is 1-03 has two straight lines. The 1-04 only has a dot. So that is when it does the reinforced stitch, whether it goes forward and back stitches, like an old school back stitch, or the one with a dot just does it in place and does kind of a locking stitch. So you don't actually see the extra reinforcement. So um, if it's kind of the finished project product, what you're doing, if you're putting the binding on, it looks a little nicer to not have all those extra back stitches. 1-01 um, and 02, if you watch the, if you watch the needle while I press that, you'll see it shifted to the left hand side, so it's left justified. Um, over here on the right, there's two triangles. If I click on that, it does a mirror of the stitch, so you'll see it's right justified. Um, so you can change that to kind of start with that. 
Um, just a real quick note, if you do anything that's wide stitches like that, make sure you're using the appropriate foot. And I'll show you what I mean here. So this foot here, I don't know if you can see it well enough, it's got this nice channel in here. So whether you do a zigzag stitch or you're left justified or rough, right justified, it's fine. Some feet, like the quarter inch foot, just has a hole in the middle. So if you're stitching something right or left, when it goes through that, it'll, it'll break a needle. Um, there is, with your machine, there is also a plate that is just for a single hole needle. It just has a single hole for a needle. And so when you have that plate installed, the screen will actually disable things like zigzag stitches and whatnot. So there are some safety features built in if you put that plate on, but when you go to do embroidery, you'll have to take the plate off and put this one on. So it's up to you whether you wanna fight with that. Um, but just be aware of what's going on. So we'll start with this here. Um, so these are all your standard stitches. Up here on the top, there's another tab that this is all the decorative stitches. So I mean, there is tons of decorative stitches. You can see I can scroll down and there is ton, like oh, I just saw little Christmas trees. Um, yeah, little Christmas trees and all kinds of fun stitches that you can do. So I mean, play around with it. Um, once you load a stitch, Let's go for fun. Uh, once you load a stitch, um, you have the ability to change the width of a stitch. So if it's a zigzag, it's how wide the zigzag is, or you can change the length of a stitch. So whether it's a zigzag or a running stitch, you know, how far apart it is. So we'll kind of play around with some of these. On the decorative stitches, sometimes it's locked down to how, like this one, you can't change the size of it. So let's see if we can find a different one where we can. Yeah, decorative stitches are all kind of designed a little bit different. I may go over here to the utility stitches and do some different fun ones. All right, so can you see how these are enabled to be able to change them now? They aren't just dashes. Okay, so the width, and you can see it has the display here. As I make the width bigger, you can see it got bigger, and then you can size it down smaller, and you can see it's getting smaller. See how narrow it's getting? So that changes that. Now if you watch the little snowflakes or stars, as I change the length, you see they'll get farther apart or closer together. Um, if you'll notice that sometimes it has black around the letters, that's the default setting. So by default, when you go into the machine, this is what it's set at. So if like you don't remember what that was and you started monkeying with this, it's nice to kind of come back to come back to home. Um, so once you pick a stitch, um, you basically just lower the presser foot and you can either use your foot pedal or you can use the start stop button. Let's see, it didn't look like it was threaded. And somehow got twisted underneath. Let me fix that real quick. Okay. Um, right now it's in super slow mode, but if you see, we've got a little dial here um, that has you go from either turtle speed, which is at now, we can go full speed if we want. And then you also have the adjustment of the foot control itself as to how fast it goes. And it does a really good job, the feed dogs, to get it to go straight. I mean, the only user intervention would be to, to slightly adjust it left and right, but for the most part, just let it do its thing. So we'll stop here and we'll change the width up and make it look a little different. So you can spend all day just looking at the different stitches, playing with different sizes and settings with it. All right. Um... So it's in the middle of a stitch now. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and trim it real quick and just kind of show you. So this is with the standard size, the default size, and this is when we bumped up the width and the length of it. So you can see how it does, how it, does it differently. Um, looks really good the way it's stitching out. Uh, there's a couple other little features that I'd like to show you with this. So on the bottom left-hand side of this are some fun little buttons with it. So the first one that's enabled is when the it leaves the needle down, so whenever you stop, it'll always stop with the needle down, which is really nice if you're wanting to pivot or anything like that. So you can turn that off if you don't want it. Um, there's the button to auto reinforce at the beginning. Um, not quite certain what it'll do with the decorative stitches, but like when you're doing the straight stitches, it'll definitely do the, um, let's cut it here. We'll go back to standard stitch. I can show you where you would use this most commonly. So I'm just gonna do a standard straight stitch and I have the auto reinforcement on and we're on, the, sti we're on the, the stitch selection where it does the three forward, the three back. 
So as you see, when I start this, it'll do three forward, three back, and then it finished, okay? Um, you also have it where, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the cut feature as well. And then if we hit this, you might make a liar out of me, but if we hit this reverse stitch right here, now I'm not touching anything, it's automatically doing that. And when it's done doing that reinforcement stitch, it automatically cut it for us. So if you don't want it to automatically cut, you would turn that off. So if you're doing a lot of piecing or a lot of quilting, this is really nice that whenever you start a seam, it'll automatically reinforce it. When you get to the end, you just put the button to do back stitch and it'll automatically trim for you. Super, super easy. Um, if you're doing quilting where you need a specific width of seam, so this button right here turns on a little laser beam light. Can you see that? So right now it's right in the center. So you can actually shift it off to the side if you want, wherever you want it to be. So let's say you want a quarter inch. Well, I don't know inches and millimeters, but um, the conversion, but you can set this up, this little guide to be wherever you want it to be. So if you wanted to line it up, like say as I'm stitching, that I want to be right on the edge of this, that it helps you kind of guide where you're going, kind of look where you're going. Um, so that's, that's a pretty cool feature with this as well. Um, yeah, that just, this does a mirror and switches it from one side to the other. So if you're going back and forth that you can switch to both sides of that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this as well. This here is left, right stitch. Remember I told you these straight stitches, um, the default ones that are in here, either left justified, right justified or in the center. But if you want to be just slightly off to the left or right, you can. So like this is kind of handy when you're doing binding, you don't want to be all the way to the left, but you just want to be just a hair off. You can use this to adjust it left and right. Um, let's see. What other kind of fun thing is there? This button up here that I like to call the flying staple, kind of looks like a staple that's spinning around. Um, this is what you hit in order to go into free motion mode. A lot of machines have a switch on the back that you use to, um, essentially what free motion is, is where you can move the fabric wherever you want to. And it's basically just disengaging the feed dogs. Um, so if you see right here, there's these little teeth that are in the bottom. So that takes the fabric and pulls it to the back as you're stitching and kind of moves it. When you set this, if you turn this on, those feed dogs will never come up. So when you bring this down and you start stitching, now this is probably not the right foot to be using. Do you see it's not pushing? And so you, this is where you can kind of do free motion. So now with something like this, you definitely aren't gonna to wanna to do a decorative stitch. You're gonna to wanna to do some sort of straight stitch. Um, but that's what you do. So if you're ever at a point where you're stitching and it's like the fabric is not moving and it's a regular thickness of where you've actually seen it move before, chances are you might have hit this button. Um, so you can just turn that off. If, you're, if that is off and you're still having problems where it's just not feeding through properly, you may need to look into getting a, a, a walking foot that will help kind of go, it walks on the top along with the bottom. So the feed dogs push the bottom fabric and the top helps, helps it go together. Um, let's see what else. That's mostly everything we have here. Um, again, you've got the option to be able to go into dual needle mode. Um, I won't go into too much of that. You can build up custom stitches. That's kind of fun. Um, I won't mess with that. You do have some options for tension. I've never really seen a need to do that, but if you're using some really bizarre thread or something like that, you may need to adjust that. But um, typically speaking, the way things are set up by default in the sensors that are in the machine, it, it deals with the tension all on its own. You don't have to mess with that. Um, let's see. I think that's just about it with the sewing side of it. Um, one more tip. So remember I told you about if you have the foot that has the single hole and that you break it. Um, again, I'm telling you this because I've done it too many times myself. So as you're sewing, all it takes is one little accidental tap on the screen for it to switch from one stitch to the other. And so as soon as you hit that, you're gonna break a needle if you have the wrong foot. So what I have as a common practice, if I'm doing a lot of piecing, and especially if you have a big quilt you're working with, all it takes is the quilt to touch the screen and it'll change the stitch you have as well. Up here at the top, there's a lock button. If you set that lock button, you can't change this or some kid can't come up and, and push to a different screen. Um, and so then you can keep doing what you wanna do. So I mean, it doesn't, oh. 
but in order to get out of it, you have to unlock. Um, but it's just, it's a really nice feature to be able to kind of just set things and go and not have to worry about anybody changing anything while you're working on it. So um, that's just kind of one of my little tips for you. Um, oh, just notice something else here. There also is the, it gives you what foot it suggests you use for the specific stitches. So here it's saying the J foot, as you get down, you know, into an overcasting, it tells you to use a slightly different foot. Um, it'll still work even if you don't put that foot in there. It's kind of meant to be a guideline, but kind of be smart about it. Um, make sure you're using the proper foot or something similar to it. Um, but yeah, it's a very, very smart machine. It's a great machine for sewing. Lots of fun. Um, all righty, on to embroidery. All right, now we're ready to embroider. So we just got done sewing. I want to show you the steps on how to switch back to embroidery. Um, so the first thing we want to do is turn off the machine. And a lot of people will be like, why do we need to turn off the machine? Because I can take this on and off all day long. Well, there's no electronic components to the accessory case. So that's not a big deal to add remote. But if you'll see that the embroidery unit plugs in through, through this, and when you plug it in, it gets all kind of weird. So it's always best to turn off the machine when you go to add the embroidery unit. Bring that over here. You always want to make sure you have a nice flat surface when you put this together and you want to make sure that it clicks all the way in and it's a, a smooth surface. If you have it to where it's an uneven surface, you're going to lead to issues where this separates and will give you errors later on. You definitely don't want that. Okay, so now that the embroidery unit's attached, we can turn it on. We can work on the other stuff at the same time, but. Uh, foot pedal, you don't need it all for embroidery. Just take that off and get rid of it. We get to the home screen. Again, you're gonna see the home screen the same way, but it will ask if you, it's more of a warning that it's gonna move this embroidery arm. So you just wanna make sure you don't have your coffee mug sitting here or kids sitting nearby that you're gonna hit. And it's basically gonna calibrate the arm. Okay, so everything's good with that. So we got the embroidery unit attached. We need to change our foot from our sewing machine ankle and foot. And I just like to put it up here. And we put our embroidery foot on. I was gonna say, with time it gets a little bit easier, but there's still times where it does weird things. There it goes, okay. So we tighten this on. Um, you can definitely tighten this down. I mean, definitely get a screwdriver and you can torque that. We have no problem with that. The one thing I want to caution you is when you change the needle, don't over tighten the needle. That can cause some major issues. But the embroidery foot, you want to make sure that is tight on there. Because when you're sewing, you don't want your embroidery foot to fall off and wobble and that'll make a mess. Um, the other thing is this particular embroidery foot has a plug-in on the back. That you plug in it and I'll show you what that's for a little bit later on. Um, we changed the needle to an embroidery needle. We're going to pop out our bobbin and we're going to put our bobbin with finishing touch. Again, I'll remind you with the Altair, we're going to use a 60 weight finishing touch. And on the Meridian, we're going to use a 90 weight. So the 90 weight is with the teal top on it. All right. So we have that on there. Everything's in there. So we basically have it in embroidery mode is what I'm going to call it, where we have everything in here. But if it happens to be that you're set up like this and you're like, I have a hole in a pair of pants I need to fix right now. You can still go in here to sewing mode and what it'll do is it'll move the arm out of the way. So you can still sew like this, but if you're doing large quilts and stuff like this, this gets in the way. But if it's just for a quick job, absolutely sew like this. It has no problem with that. So we just go back to the home screen and you're back here. All right, with getting started with embroidery, um, we obviously need a hoop something. Uh, in order to get this started, but I also want to talk briefly with you about stabilizers. So there's three main kinds of stabilizer. There is cutaway, which is the most common. So like if you've ever seen a shirt or anything like that where it's got kind of the stabilizer left open, that's or left on there, that's a cutaway. So when you're done sewing or stitching, you cut away what's extra. Um, there is what's called wash away, that the stabilizer is there while you stitch on everything. And then when you're done, you rinse it away and you don't see any of the stabilizer. All that's left is thread. 
So that's wash away. And then there's a third kind that I don't really have a sample for, but it's called tear away. And it's basically just like cut away, but when you're done, you can just pull on it and it tears away. It leaves a little bit behind the stitches. Um, but aside from that, you know, you don't see the extra stuff on the back. Okay. So those are the three main kinds of stabilizer. And then within each one of those stabilizers, there's different thicknesses. So you go all the way from like a light mesh or something that's really light. You see it, it's not super stiff. So if you were to put this on a shirt, it wouldn't, you know, stick out really weird. Or this is something that's a little bit heavier weight. Now, the reason why you would choose one over the other is depending on what you have, whether you have more of kind of like a scripty or a, a finer, um, density is what I'm looking for. So, um, if it's really, really, really thick like this, you'll see, even with this stabilizer I use, can you see where it's kind of puckering a little bit? So I might've needed to use a slightly larger stabilizer just so it doesn't pucker. But when you're doing something more delicate, um, and scripty like that, you know, it's not a problem at all. And if you start to see anything pucker, you don't have to stop and rehoop and start over your project. You can always do what's called floating and float your stabilizer underneath and kind of get it on there. You can either tape it on the bottom or even kind of float it once it starts stitching, it sticks with it. Um, so there's ways to kind of play with that. Um, but I just kind of want to explain that. That's a common question we have. All right. So these are the hoops that we have for the Altair and the Meridian. Um, you'll notice that these may look different from hoops that you have in other machines. So they kind of have these like little barcode looking kind of things on it. And so that we'll use with the IQ designer a little bit later. Um, but so you have triangles at the top that tell you to line those up. You also have little notches to kind of show you the center of it that helps with it. And then we have the screw at the bottom that you can use to kind of loosen it up to kind of pull them apart. So you lay the bottom piece of the hoop down, you lay your stabilizer over the top. You make sure you line this up the correct way and you just kind of pop it in. Now you can see this is really kind of loose and floppy. So we got to tighten this up. And when you're using just stabilizer, there's really no harm in like really over tightening it. But if you put a shirt or something like this in here, you don't want to super, super, super tighten it. Cause what it can do is it can actually kind of stretch and kind of pull at the fabric and do what's even called hoop burns. So when you take the hoop off, even after washing it, you still see that mark. So you definitely won't, don't want to damage your fabric. But if it's just the stabilizer, it won't be a problem at all. So what I do is I just kind of pull on it a little bit, make sure it's nice and smooth. Again, I would only pull on it if it is stabilizer. If this was a shirt or, you know, part of your cotton quilt or something like that, I definitely would not pull on it. You don't want to skew it or, or make it weird. Um, I think that's more just my OCD to make it nice and smooth. But um, the trick with this is when I flip it over, you can kind of, kind of sounds like a drum. Um, it's one of those, like if you were to do this, you know, you can actually just feel it's not going to pop out of the hoop. When we had it originally, it looked like you look at it wrong and it's going to fall out. Um, you definitely want your project to stay in the hoop through the whole stitching process because when it falls out of the hoop and you try to put it in there, it's never lined up quite the same way. Um, I'll just show you briefly how we load this into the hoop once we get there, but there's a little sliding mechanism. You slide this all the way into there and then you lock it down. And then if you need to pull it out for whatever reason, you unlock it and you pull it out. Um, it's kind of personal preference to some degree how you pull it out. Uh, with the smaller hoops, it's not a big deal, but when you get to the larger hoops, let me grab the larger hoop real quick. When you get to the larger hoop, there is a lot of, oh, yeah, do your thing. I had it in sewing mode, so it's kind of being weird. All right. So with a larger hoop, when you come in here, there's definitely a lot more torque when you pull from it this way. So it's better to try to, to keep all your pulling near this unit here, right here, just to make it, because you definitely don't want to pull on this or twist it or cause any damage. So um, yeah, be a little bit more cautious with the larger hoops. With the smaller ones, it's a lot easier. So I just showed you how to hoop stabilizer only. I went back and I hooped this again with both layers, the stabilizer and some fabric, just because it's a little bit more fun to stitch on. So I'm gonna go ahead and load this in here. So at the main screen, we're gonna choose that we wanna do embroidery. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of categories of built-in designs that we have here. Um, so I'll just click between a couple of them. And you can see there's several pages of what we have going on here. Um, trying to think if there's something kind of fun in here. 
But you see there's tons and tons and tons of different designs in here. So if I were to pick one, for example, I just want to show you some information that's on the screen. So first off, it shows you the size of it. So this here is about three inches by seven. Um, it shows us it's 5,296 stitch count. It should take approximately nine minutes to stitch. Uh, that doesn't count for thread changes. So if like you had 12 different colors that you have to change, that's awfully, obviously going to take a lot longer. This has two thread colors it has, and down here it shows you that the red is going to take approximately three minutes, and the black is going to take six. So pretty easy there. Um, I'm going to digress just a little bit, because mine is set up on inches. By default, this is set on millimeters. So up here on the top, there's a little page icon. When you click on that, this is all our settings. If you arrow over, and it's page eight, you can change it from inches to millimeters. So whatever makes sense to you. Um, I will tell you that it'll only show the inches when you're in the embroidery screen because it makes sense from a hoop size. But when you go back to sewing, it's still going to keep millimeters because it doesn't make sense to have a 0 0.00125 inch for a seam. It's a lot easier to show you in millimeters. Um, so there's nothing wrong with it if it's not showing that. Um, let me go back. So again, these are all under the exclusives. These are all built-in ones that are in there. Um, and they should go from all different sizes. I'm just going to pick a fish one. Oh, that's still a pretty relatively small one. But there are some, are some really big sizes out there. I think the Asian ones are ones that would fit into the larger screen, the larger hoop. Yeah, so this is, yeah, little nine and three quarters by nine and a quarter. So this would definitely need to be in the larger nine and a half by 14 hoop. Okay, so be aware of that. Um, under section two, there's some more um, kind of like delicate stitching. Um, still very big. This is, you know, four inches by 14 inches roughly. Lots of stuff that are out there. Um, so again, feel free to dig around and see what's out there. There's some really, really cute designs. And these are all built into your machine and the same designs are in the Meridian and the Altair. So section three is our fonts. So you have that's weird how it numbers it like that. So you have 24, so you technically have 25 different fonts that are built into it. Um, this one is commonly overlooked, this exclusive script. This is kind of like the baby lock official script. Um, so that's one font that's out there and then plus all of these. So it's pretty simple. Um, once you select a font that you want, you can start typing in. So these are all the capital letters. If I want to go lowercase, do Altair. I can type. So from here you can change, oops, I'll go back to beginning. So you can change the sizing of this. So right now with just the A, this is the capital A. If I do the large size, it's about an inch by inch on it. If I go to the medium, it goes down to like three quarters of an inch. If I go down further, it's about a third of an inch. So we'll do the large, but it's easier to set the size when you're at the beginning of the word and then they all get set consistently. You can go back through and adjust each one individually if you wanted. And then later on there's, there's settings to go in and change all of that as well. If you want any of the numbers that are in here, any special characters or any foreign accented characters are in there. Um, once you've typed in everything you want, um, if maybe you don't like the way that font looks, you can hit the button down here and change. Maybe I, oop, that changed all the characters. But you can go in here and play with this forever, it seems like. All kinds of options with it. But once you get it to where it's all set to where you want it, you put it into here. Um, so again, this is kind of in your edit screen right now. Um, again, it's showing you things overall. So overall, this is about three and a half inches by an inch tall. Um, if you can look, we have all four of our hoop sizes enabled. Let's see if I can remember them all. So the smallest hoop that's going to show in here is your four by four hoop. The next one up is a five by seven. The one up from that, I believe is a nine and a half by nine and a half square. And then the largest is the nine and a half by 14. So depending on how you've positioned this on the screen and how big your design is, it'll allow you to use certain hoops. Like right now we have a five by seven loaded in here. 
So if I scroll off the screen and you can see it's disabled the four by four and the five by seven, if I go to inverter, it's gonna say you need to put a larger hoop in. So it's really smart to tell you that. But you'll look at it and go, oh, but the design is three and a half by one inch. It's not gonna work, but you've moved it to where it's actually gonna stitch outside of the hoop. So there's, if you go into edit, you can go into move. And if you hit the one right in the middle, this will center it right in the hoop and you'll see that that hoop is enabled again. So you can do that. Um, let's see, I got thread on there. Uh, there's sizing you can do from this point. There's multiple types of sizing you can do. I think here is where, aha, in here is where you can change the whole thing at once. So if you're like, that's way too big, I wanna move it down or if I wanna make it bigger at this screen, you can do that. Um, you can change it where you just shrink it and expand it on either the X or Y axis, or my suggestion is to always do it on multiple directions. Cause again, like, for example, if you had like a, a cartoon kind of a face and you stretched it weird, it's going to look funny when it stretch it on both, both axes. So you can make it big, you can make it small, you can play with stuff like that. Um, Go back to the edit screen. You can rotate things if you want. You can rotate it by 90 degrees. Or if you want to make it diagonal, you can do all kinds of fun stuff with it. Um, this button here will copy it. So if you wanted two copies of it for whatever reason, um, I don't want that extra one, so I'm going to delete that one. Um, this is set it up to where you can tile things. So if you wanted, let's say maybe you're making decorations and you just want one thing stitched out um, and you want to make 12 of them, you can have it set up to copy on like a grid. Mm, we'll get into some of this other stuff a little bit later, but just basically showing you this, um, you can go in and you can add in here's some more monogramming kind of designs here under five. We've got shapes. So you can go into here and you can pick some different shapes. Let's see which one's kind of fun. So we got the Altair, let's size it, make it a little bit bigger to go around the heart. And we'll try to rotate it. So you can use the tools here to rotate it, or you can actually, well, I mean, you have to use the tools to rotate it, but you can actually, if you want to move it around, you can just touch the screen itself and do that. Let's say for argument's sake, I want to change the color of that. You can go into the colors and pick this. This is more for visualization. Ultimately, whatever you thread it is what it's going to stitch out as. So um, it's just more of a guideline when you're looking at it that I pick the two colors. Um, so we've got a couple elements on there. Oops, I need to change something down because it won't fit in our hoop anymore. So let's do... Take this one back. I'm just going to reset it back to the original here. Ooh, it's still not going to fit. Spent a lot of time playing with this. That is not what I meant to do. So there also is undo features too, which is really nice. So once you have all your changes set, um, you can save it to the machine if you want. So you can do memory and you can save it to a USB. You can send it out through Wi-Fi to a computer if you want. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Right now, I'm just going to save it to the internal memory just so we can pull it up later if we want to. Once you're ready, you hit embroidery and we're here. So it's telling us that we're stitching the first thing. We're stitching the word Altair. It's going to take about four minutes. It's suggesting that we do black. I've got purple loaded. It's good enough for me. So all you do is you put the foot down and you hit start. If at any time anything acts weird or you hear sounds or you're just not trusting it, you can always hit the start stop button or you can touch the screen and it'll cancel stitching right now. Um, so it's still threaded, the needle's down. Um, it's ready to where you can restart it, but I want to kind of simulate something for you. Let's say your thread broke, or maybe you got a notification up that you ran out of bobbin thread. There is a sensor in this machine that actually detects when you run out of bobbin thread, 
wonderful, wonderful feature. So if you're ever at a point like that, where the top thread broke or you ran out of bobbin thread, you just go ahead and do the cut button. And so it'll cut whatever thread is there. You can go through, you can re-thread your thread at the top. You can go down here, you can fix your bobbin, put whatever you need into there. You come in here. Um, if it looks like it stopped in a good place, you can just go ahead, push your foot down and go start. Um, if for whatever reason, you know, it went several stitches where it didn't do it and you want to simulate going back. Down here on the bottom, there's the needle plus minus button. On this, you can set there and go forward 10 stitches or back 10 stitches, or you can even skip to different thread stops. It's like we can skip ahead and just do this one. So if you ever want to go back, uh, and I just realized I lost my place, but that's okay. I'll show you that. So right now we're back to stitch zero. We definitely don't want to start in stitch zero. If you look in here, there's a green crosshairs in here, and that'll show you where we're stitching. So I'm going to kind of advance through the A. So now I did a little bit of the L. I'll probably back up a little bit. And I'll just start it from there. So we'll see what it does. Okay, another feature we have is let's say you need to go pick up your kids and it's okay to not trust your machine stitching when you're not there. It's probably a smart idea. Um, there are safety counters in place where you could potentially leave it, but it's, it's all up to you. Obviously, you don't want to do anything to damage your machine or your project, depending on what you're working on. But let's say you want to stop and you just don't want to leave it running for a while. So it does have the built-in ability that when you turn off the machine or if it loses power or anything, that it'll pick back up. Again, my tip to you is if you know you're going to leave it, go ahead and stop it and cut the thread where you're at, okay? Because the very first thing it's going to want to do, remember it wants to initialize the arm? Well, if your needle's down and your thread's all in there, you're not going to have the ability to stop and cut your thread and do all that prior to wanting to move your, remove your thread. So we're going to simulate. I'm going to go pick up the kids, turn off the machine. We're going to come back on, turn the machine back on. I'm ready to finish my project. It's going to wake up like it normally does. It's going to tell us to remove the frame because it wants to initialize. So this is why we cut the thread beforehand. And again, I'll show you where we restarted. You can't even tell where I did it. So the next thing it says is, is it okay to recall what we were working on last time? Absolutely. That's what I want to finish. So you can see it saved exactly where we were. And we pop it in there. Put the needle down and just keep going like we never stopped. I know I keep stopping this and making it go on forever, but I also wanted to show you at the top, there's like a little progress bar. So as we're working on the black thread, you see there's a little red arrow and it shows you how much further we have to go on that. Even down here, it's updated. We have about a minute left of stitching. So it's really nice to kind of see if you need to go take a restroom break. Sometimes you can wait for it's a longer thread color. If you heard the little music, it's telling you, okay, it's time for you to do something. So now it's done with that color stop. Now it's ready for the next color. So now it's up to you to change the color. So when we change the color, I have you, it's recommended to always cut the thread at the top here. And what you do is pinch the thread around the needle and just pull it out. Oops. Don't lose your little spool cap in the top. Sometimes it can be a little sneaky. So if you ever can't find your spool cap, always look in your last, your last thread. More than likely that's where it is. We're going to quickly load the next color. Now, I just want to warn you because this one here, see how this is peeling up? I may actually just take this off because we don't want the thread to catch on that and cause problems with our project. So again, I have the presser foot up when I do the top part, then I put the presser foot down, then it makes it easier to get down here and do all that. And we're ready to go again. Got the new color. We just hit start. Super easy. As you can see, there's a little bit of puckering. So with as dense as this is, I should have probably put a little bit more stabilizer in, but it really wasn't too bad. Um, 
blanket stitch is super cute and turned out great. So let's say we have either a fabric that we want to work with or we're trying to work around an existing embroidery. Let's say we want to add some numbers or let's say you want to add the year in here underneath this. So I want to teach you some ways to position. So the first way to do it is just to do manual positioning with the, the features on the machine. Um, so we'll go there and then we'll go into some of the advanced positioning after that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to load the hoop. I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to be lazy and just pick numbers I had saved on the machine. All right, so we have these. I can see them on the screen. I know it's, you know, less than an inch, but I don't know where it's going to stitch out. All right, so I'm going to go into here. I'm going to go into embroidery mode and then I'm going to do layout. And in here, you could move things around. As you can see, the hoop moves. But again, do you really know where it's going to stitch out? Mm, not really. Okay. So if you notice when we plugged in the foot, it has this cord back here, right? So that has it to where you plug in a laser light that it has on it. So if you push the W plus, which is happens to be the, this is a W plus foot that we have plugged in. If you push that button, you'll see that there's a little red laser light that's on there. Okay. So you can use that to kind of help you position what you have going on. Now, what I will also show you, so right now this is on the middle of the design. If you go down here to this, um, it's like a, a square with an arrow around it, right? In here, you can pick the different positions. So right now we're at the middle of the design, but I'm like, well, I don't really care where the middle is. I just want to make sure that the left or the right doesn't cover up my outer layer. So I'm going to do the bottom left corner, and you can see it doesn't touch the edge there. I'm going to do the bottom right corner, but it's not quite centered. So I want to go back to move, and I can kind of move it over a little bit, and then go back to layout, and I can do this. So I mean, I can keep playing with the, the different points here, or you can hit this button at the top that's going to automatically trace the whole design where it's going to be. So it's going to kind of show you where it's going to stitch in there, which is pretty nice. It's pretty easy to do. Um, for machines that don't have the laser light, or if you just have a standard foot that's on here for some reason. Um, you can still do this and then you can do the needle up down and kind of see where it's going to be for the positions. It's like you want the right corner, you can put your needle down and you can kind of see where it's going to be. And it's not actually making a stitch, so it's real easy just to pull it out. Um, so that's one way of doing positioning with that. So that's what I call the manual positioning way. And then next we'll go into um, a little bit of the IQ designer just to show you some advanced positioning that we have with the Altair and the Meridian. We have the Altair and the Meridian, so let's use some more of the advanced features of it. There is an app on your phone as well as a utility that you can put on your computer that allows you to communicate with this machine through Wi-Fi. So the first thing we need to do first is set up our Wi-Fi connection. So we go into the settings page, which is the little paper icon at the top. We're going to go to page 9. And first we need to make sure that our wireless is enabled. So we turn that to on and then you'll need to go through your setup wizard. And this you'll pick the Wi-Fi password you have or the Wi-Fi network you have. Oops. Nope, too fast for it. We're going to apply the settings. Okay, what's really important is that the network you connect to on the embroidery machine is the same Wi-Fi net network you connect to on your phone and the same network you connect to on your computer. So they need to be the same one in order to communicate properly. The other thing I want to caution you to change is the machine name. So we have this machine name set to Altair. A lot of times it starts with some crazy name and it doesn't necessarily make sense. So if you want to make sure you're connecting to the right machine, give your machine a name. You can do that in here where you hit change and you set the name to whatever you want to set. All right, so we're going to go ahead and use the fancy hoops that come with the Altair and the Meridian. Again, the ones that have the little barcodes. So if you're sharing hoops from another machine, you need to make sure it has these. Okay, so we've got the Wi-Fi set up on the machine. Um, we're going to get the Wi-Fi set up on our phone. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the IQ positioning app that you can download for either Apple or the Google Play. And once you go into here, we're going to click the top one, which is photo frame for easy positioning. 
actually I skipped a step because it automatically remembers it. So under here under settings, I've already gone in and selected the Altair that I'm connected to. So when you first come into here, you need to make sure that it goes here and you pick which machine. So if you have multiple machines at home that are turned on, you may see multiple here. But right now we're working with the Altair, so make sure you connect to the Altair. And then we're going to click the top one for embroidery, for photo, photo frame for easy positioning. And then we're going to click OK. And you see we got to hold this around the frame. See how it's scanning the frame? And you got to hold it level for three seconds. And then it scans it. If you confirm that the picture is correct, what you have in there, we're going to go ahead and hit send to the machine. And it said it's sent. And if you can see on the screen, it says the image was sent from the mobile app. Do we want to update? So I'm going to hit OK. So it wants us to attach the frame. I'm going to hit OK. It's going to say that the arm is going to move. And what you'll actually see is the background of this is actually going to show what we scanned in here, which is really pretty cool. So now from this point, then you can take whatever you want. Like let's say maybe I want it above the heart. You can see it in here and actually place it exactly where you want to place it. So it's pretty cool um, to use the positioning like that. It's really nice. Um, we did it here with embroidered, but this is a great way too if you're if you've got like really fun fabric that's got maybe some things in it that you want to stitch in a certain area, like if um, you want to stitch on a snowman's belly or something like that, you can completely position where it is on here. Um, once you stitch this out, um, it will remove the background from the screen. But if you're just playing around with this and you're like, I want to get rid of that Altair background, up here on the top, you just press this little button and it'll hide that if you want it to come back you bring it forward. So there's no way to like just delete that image other than to scan a new one in. But it's a really neat way to see exactly where it's going to be stitching in reference to the hoop. So we've shown you how to do some embroidery designs from the machine but there's only so many on the machine and there's tons of uh, embroidery files out there you can purchase or even make on your own. So I'm going to show you how to load embroidery files from the USB. So you'll actually notice on the side of your machine you have two USB ports. You can use either one of them for loading designs. Um, the second one is designed where you can use a mouse. So if you don't want to touch the screen, you can plug in a mouse to the side and you can navigate on there if you'd like to. It's all personal preference on that. So, But when you're loading a design, you can put the USB in either one of them. Doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to hit the top one because that's the one I put in. And you'll see it's loaded all the designs that I have on that USB. And so you can pick a design just like you would from the machine. You can hit set. Uh, again, remember I told you it still has the background from before, so we're just going to turn that off so we don't see it. We can see the design from here if we want. We can save it to the machine, or we can just stitch it as it is now. And you hit embroidery, and just go like you normally would. Super easy. All right, so next I want to show you how to send files from your computer to your embroidery machine. It's actually a really handy tool. You can bypass the USB stick altogether. So first things first, I want you to go to babylock.com. Uh, this utility is only downloadable for Windows, so hopefully you have a Windows machine. I'm not aware of it working with a Chromebook, and it definitely doesn't work with Mac. So um, you're limited to that feature. So if you go to babylock.com and you search for Design Database Transfer, and you scroll down on the result page, you'll see there's a design database transfer tool. Let's be click on that link. All right. So on this page, I want to point out, just because it's very, very hard to see, there's a download link right here. So you'll download the app and install it like you would any other, other program. Once it's installed, the little icon down here is a little paper with an arrow. So if you click on that, So it has some default embroidery files that come with that utility. So you can see those here. Um, one of the things you'll also notice that you're actually able to see embroidery files on your computer. If you've ever tried to look at a PES file or try to open it, your computer's like, I don't know what to do with it. So this is a really neat tool to be able to see a little thumbnail version of what your design is. Because like this one, I have no idea what 33101627 means. So at least here you can see it's a fish. All right. So to finish setting up, again, I mentioned that you need to have the Wi-Fi that your embroidery machine connected to is the exact same Wi-Fi name that your computer is connected to. So when you have that, you click on this icon here. That's the embroidery machine with a gear. This is our settings. And it'll show you the machines that you have um, selected. 
Um, I already have this one selected, but you would click add and it's going to search for machines in your Wi-Fi network and you pick the one you want and hit add. And then we're going to hit OK. Okay, so um, I'm going to switch to the inverter machine, just kind of show you that I don't have smoke and mirrors going on here. So we're going to click on embroidery. Instead of loading from the local inverter machine or from the USBs, we're going to click the Wi-Fi icon. And you're going to see we don't have anything in our queue for anything that was sent over through Wi-Fi. So on the computer, I'm going to pick a design. I'm going to say I want the fish and we'll put it down and then the sun and we'll put it down. So these are the two files I want to transfer over to my machine. Oops, I have the wrong machine selected. So I'm going to go back to the Altair and I'm going to pick the fish and the sun again. Okay, so these haven't been sent over. This is just in the queue to be sent over. Once you have added all the files you want, you click the button that says send it over to the inverter machine with the arrow to the inverter machine. And once you click on that, it'll tell you that it is finished outputting the data. And if you look over at your inverter machine, it takes a little while, but it's not too bad. Boom, it's there. You didn't need to transfer anything to on a USB stick or anything like that. Um, so it has a little bit of an internal memory for these files, but if it's something you would like to use over and over again, or if you're not going to stitch out right away, I would definitely take these and save them locally. Uh, but in order to stitch one out, we'll pick the sun and you can hit set. And then from here you can save memory and you can save it to the machine, or you can just go ahead and stitch it out. But it's pretty neat to be able to just assign things over to do it. Um, if you turn off the machine and turn it back on, those files are there. Um, I'm not sure exactly how many it'll let you have in there, but I mean, there are space limitations. Um, if I go back out here, if you want to clean up what's out here, like, so let's say, you know, I didn't really want the fish. You can select the fish and hit delete and it'll delete it from that, that area. Likewise, if you made changes to this, let's say we want to make it a red sun. Um, you can save it out here to the Wi-Fi. I'm not really sure what a good use case for that would be. Um, so if you go out and you try to add from the Wi-Fi, you'll see it's saved out here. Um, I haven't seen a way where this goes back out to the computer or anything like that, but it is an additional area where you can save designs. Um, but that's how you can send it from your computer over to your embroidery machine. Another neat feature. And the last feature we're going to talk about today is the IQ Designer. The IQ Designer is a much bigger thing than what I'll show you today, but I want to give you kind of the basics to where you can kind of play around, and then we can get you to explore more of what you can do at another time. Um, so again, what we're going to do is we're going to be using the IQ Intuition Positioning app again that we used earlier. So when I open that up, so... I have that open and I want to show you what we're going to do. We're going to take just a simple coloring page of a hot air balloon and we're going to send this picture into here and then we're going to use that to kind of digitize the design to be able to stitch out. So um, pretty, pretty neat. So what we're going to do is we'll take a picture of it with the phone and we're going to go to do the select image for creating a design. And then I want to pick that image and we're going to click send to the machine. Okay, it's been sent to the IQ Designer. All right, and then in here on the main screen, you see there's an IQ Designer field right there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this to be a line design that we, we wanna use this as an outline because we're gonna fill it in with things. So I'm gonna go to the Wi-Fi setting and you'll see these are all the pictures that I have sent to it. So the newest ones are most are at the top. Okay, so there's my hot air balloon. I'm gonna hit set. Okay, from in here, you can change the detection, um, the grayscale. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay and see how it does the first time. Um, I may go back and see if I can get it a little bit more detailed. And you can see now I see some little specks that I don't wanna have, so I'm gonna go forward one. And I think that does a pretty good job of grabbing the outline and not any of the background noise. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit set. And what it's done is it's converted this into 
um, kind of a, an outline drawing. Well, what I want to do is I want to kind of treat this as like a coloring page. It's kind of fun. So um, there's all kinds of things you can kind of do with this. What I want to do is I want to add fill stitches into the balloon. So the second grouping of things is where we can add stitches or fill stitches. So if I click on the color, Mm -hmm. Let me go back. So I want to do a fill stitch. So I'm going to drop in the area. So I don't want to paint it on. I actually want to drop in uh, in the area. I'm going to pick pick on the the color again. It's not going to let me pick it. Ah, okay. So what I did is not clicked on the color itself, but click on the little icon for the fill stitches. So you have the choice of doing a fill stitch, or you have the you can do a stipple stitch. Or on this one, you can select from many different fill stitches that we have on the machine. You can see we have all kinds of different options. So we'll pick kind of a fun one here. And okay, we'll say I want this one green. And this is where we're going to color it in. So I'm going to say I want to put that there. And then let's pick another color and another design. Pick that, hit okay. Let's do that one kind of a... Uh, orangey. We're going to drop that one in there. We can keep, you can probably spend hours in here playing around with all this. Put that one over there, but you get kind of the idea where you can kind of just go in and it's using the lines that you scanned in in order to kind of have boundaries with it. Um, you can hit next, and then at this point, you've got some different settings that you can do for each one. So the arrows here select between what you have. If you want, you can click on this. You say, okay, I don't really like that design. I want to go back to a stipple. So you have the ability to change this here. Um, you can change the settings, like how dense and how not it is. This is the, the spacing between some of the stipple stitches. So you can make that bigger. You can make it smaller. Um, you hit preview. Oops. Um, I don't remember if it sets it here or if it, but later on you'll actually see the update. But once you go through all the settings, you can kind of play with all that in here. Um, you click past and do OK. So now this will take it from IQ Designer and it actually puts it into your embroidery mode. If you can see, it does the outline stitch of what it is and it fills in the decorative stitches. So we're going to go ahead and send it over to embroidery. You can see these are the stops. It's going to do the fill stitches first, and then it'll go into doing the outline stitch after. So that's a really cool way of taking something, either it's a children's drawing or a coloring page, and actually convert it to embroidery really easily just using your machine. You don't need any digitizing software for this. Um, if you want to get more advanced than what we have in here, then you may lead towards a digitizing software, but this does some really pretty cool features with it. Um, again, we plan to have some classes at Meyer Sewing to be able to, to drill down and do a lot of different projects with this, but this gives you just the basics on how to use the IQ Designer, which is pretty neat. And so that's basically the basics of the Altair and the Meridian. I've shown you how to do the sewing with the Altair. We've shown you how to switch into embroidery mode. Uh, we've shown you lots of different features on how to use the built-in designs, how to transfer files from a USB, USB from the computer, um, how to use IQ Designer, how to use the positioning app in order to scan uh, the hoop that you have in order for positioning, um, to be able to align your designs with the fabric, and then also some basic digitizing that you can do with the IQ Designer. So the Altair and the Meridian have tons of features to play with. Um, don't be afraid to hop in and play around and check it out. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us at Meyer Sewing. We're here with you every stitch of the way.